Hello and welcome back to another video. So I was called up by my dad and it said that he has his tape reel to reel recorder, Tunberg TD28, at a serviceman who says he is waiting to burn a EEPROM. And I was thinking, EEPROM? I was thinking, I was discussing with a guy called Knut like four years ago. Uh, about this EEPROM, which is really weird, so... And he said it was hard to find, it's hard to pro program, and um, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, I said to this guy, uh, this service guy, I called him up, and I said, okay, I can, I can try make that um, Arduino uh, solution for this. So basically what it is, is uh, on the logic board of the tape recorder, the one that decides which switches are going to be read and what motors is going to run at certain, when, yeah, when the tape is rewinding, for example, you have to do things in a certain sequence and anyway, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> but I said, okay, I can try this, I can make this and... Um, I designed a replacement board with a really, really small chip on it, but then I found the 80 tiny 2313, which I think will be a drop-in replacement. Then I found out that my Ubuntu couldn't run, I couldn't compile uh, with AVR GCC. For some reason, it doesn't find my um, standard IO.edge environment libc or something you know what let's just go with uh, assembler this is just this prom is taking inputs and it's putting it on the output and the enable signals are high all the way so all the time so, <laughs> so that was i was done have done and now i'm just making the intro because i've already made the video and uh I will make the video about soldering up those ports because they are sponsored, so <laughs> it's a bit backwards, but uh, well, I don't know if this will work. Maybe we have to use that board, who knows, so yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. So this is, will be just a programming video and uh, about AVR ASM. And we will also simulate it in the last half of this video. Okay, so let me show you the coding. And um, I started off coding with uh, with the AVR GCC, but the problem there was that on Ubuntu 20, I couldn't make my projects anymore. What I did was I used something called AVRA. It's an assembler and uh, a macro assembler and the one that comes with Ubuntu it's 10 years old <laughs> but then I went to GitHub and then I found the new one there was something missing in the old one for example the output file name didn't work so but now it works and the reason for that is uh, I was going to make a make file um, for this project this chip is going to support two different rooms yeah so this is the project, but I think I can get an 80 tiny, which has five all up here and ground down here. And all the other pins uh, are IO, so that's no problem. And, there, and the chip has an internal oscillator anyway. So, so I made a make file, just a set of uh, environment variables here. I haven't figured out the fuses yet. Um, this is the executable. This is the program used for burning which we are not going to use anyway. This is the name of the files that comes out. And this is the speed of the programmer, which we are not going to use. And uh, this is where we will find our include files. Uh, is which chip you are using. So for AVRA, you have to use these com files though. So, and uh, they are very handy when you are programming. So I really like to open them control l and then you can paste it and then you can find your chip 
and you can see stuff like s register uh, uh, stack pointer it only has one stack pointer by the way it's a, such a small chip and then at the bottom the most important part is all the interrupt vectors we are not going to use any of those so we're just going to move the input to the output anyway but uh, our program I think should start after the last uh, interrupt vector yeah so you have all the defines in here you can see the names of the pin so if you want to read the pin, you will use these variables. You can see they just equate to a number. So you could actually just drop these names and just write the numbers, right? Here I'll just uh, rename something, A0, to which pin I'm going to use. I just mapped everything using the, uh, the diagram here and uh, the pinout of the chip, which is really boring. So you're just going to skip that. So the first thing you need to do is to say what are you going to have at the reset vector. Well at the reset vector you put this jump to your program. Where is your entry point? So I called it setup. And after setup you have the main loop. I forgot to show you why the reason why I have a make file anyway. Just because then I can write make, boink. And it's, there you have your hex file. You can make clean if I want to push the git up or something you see no make files anymore which looks like this all right so the next thing I do is I uh, load the uh, content of the room now this room is put into the code memory that's why I include it in the code so what I've done is I have taken the files from uh, a guy called Knut but he managed to dump this room and there are two of them the ones which is marked pink for seven and a half ips i think you can see that in the uh, image of the logic board there's like a pink stripe there so i took these files and then i put db in front of them and to make this works you have to have pairs always stop on an even number now the setup is very easy. <laughs> this was a catch for me when I did the fridge alarm. Um, if you don't set up the stack pointer, if you use the stack, you will get corruption when you start using the registers, so or RAM anyway. But I'm not using the stack in this program. It's a very simple program. Um, here I'm setting up all the inputs and uh, basically clearing all the bits in the uh, data direction registers and then we start our loop so the first thing we do is we read the inputs so to read the input I have to read from three ports A, B and D and for A which is basically it's such a, a mix of inputs so like 4 is on 0, 3 is on 1, 0 is 2 it couldn't be worse <laughs> Uh, it's SBRC. There you go. It's skip if bit in register is clear. So you have like 32 registers, and uh, you can check a bit in one register. Um, like here we have temp, which I put all the pin A into, and then I can check that bit. I'm just checking if uh, PA0 is uh, cleared, then I'm not going to do anything. Because, but if it's uh, set it's not going to skip the next instruction and in the next instruction I uh, set the bit at A4 in the input so 0 1 2 3 4 so then I set that one if it was cleared then I will just uh, not set it and then that bit will be 0 because of the clear at the beginning so that's what I'm doing here just setting bits and uh, for the next one or put B that's a one-to-one -one, uh, connection so I want to do something a bit faster I um, write this is a bit store in a special bit register called T so I can use it for later so that's the one I use for cutting to get the seven and a half or 15 IPS anyway here's the masking of those uh, three bits 
five to seven and then I just or it with the input so whatever is in the input I apply these three bits if they are set they will also be set in the input now for D it's also almost one to one we read a D and then we rotate left and then we mask those two at the one and two and then we or it in so that's it we can go to the next now we yeah, want to look up whatever's in the, um, the room, like here. So this is the start of the room, and then you have an offset to get to the point you want the data. And the offset is what we have calculated right now. I could have made this, this a lot simpler by um, rearranging the data in here. Or the bits in every uh, byte just to get the correct output without all this fiddling but I don't think speed is a problem here we're talking um, slow moving motors and arms and everything so load program memory so loading program memory so loads one byte point to two by a said register into the destination register RD so yes I call that the register output I think like there so um, you have different version of it you can read and have set increment by one and to do that you have you have to put a plus one in front uh, that's handy if you're going through a uh, table one by one but I'm just going to pick one so we're not going to use that plus one but first we have to set up this said register so what you do then is that you take your uh, label for the prune right you have the label here and you put it into set you say you want a low byte and then a high byte because these are 16 bit values now there here you can see that uh, t register we stored earlier sorry for the scrolling again um here we stored the value of at G1N on port B um, into T register and now we can test that so we branch if T is set that means that uh, the pull up is high that means we have cut the pin so if you cut the pin we will jump here if you don't cut the pin we'll just continue to here so so there you can see I can distinguish these two and then when these two instructions has been loaded into set we have to jump over this uh, part though. so therefore I have another label going down here now set is loaded I'm just going to clear temp because I'm going to use it to add the carry down here so that will begin here so this is set now and then you add input and then you get down to where you want to and then we do the readout with the LPM load program memory so we get the value into output so output is um, register 19 but it doesn't matter I just uh, <laughs> the program is program is so small I can just assign names to different registers and I'm happy with that so all right so the next thing is then to set the output and this is the arrangement it's much easier so in uh, output which is correctly arranged now we have to move them to pd2 to pd6 we have to left shift twice and then we put it out on the port d and the same thing for pb0 to pb2 so you have to uh, move 5 to 7 down to 0 to 2 on the port and the way I do that I do a swap here and the reason for that first I mask though as usual and I move it left once then it goes down to 4 to 7 or 4 to 6 but if you swap it you move it faster though then you move it all the way down to uh, 0 to 2 so basically you're swapping the four 
first bits with the last four bits uh, or the nibbles and then finally I'm afraid that I'm overwriting that setting I had for pull-ups so I'm putting those back in just oring this uh, value into temp and I put it out on the port again so right so <laughs> hopefully I don't change my mind later because this line of code will then destroy whatever I change in my setup here which was here so if I change this the part at the bottom here will destroy it so but this is faster though so that's good so that's it that's the code and uh, <laughs> I don't know more more to say so uh, AVR Find, find, here we are, like, launching it, there you go, so what you do, um, you could make it first, I don't think you have to make it, so just clean here, you can check that it's running, but this uh, simulator, now we can see, uh, we have the correct device, and the correct pinout and everything, so you can see your code in here. So what we're going to do now is just assemble. Now we can use that. Now we can see the listing after the assembling. Those includes have actually become <laughs> in line with the code here, as you can see. Right. So what can you do with this uh, in this program? Well, you can simulate. So let's do that. There you go. And uh, you have windows, you can look at RAM, which not, we're not using RAM, we're using the ports. The first thing it does is to initialize the stack pointer. There you see, it's up here. Yeah, so here it is, stack pointer now turned from 0 to DF. I'm just going to set up the ports. Now here we want pull-ups, so we put a 1 on this position so uh, g1 is at pb3 i think there you can see at three we get a pull up uh, actually you can uh, change this in uh, runtime you can just make this an output then it becomes a high instead high or low but uh, we are using it and pull up we start reading the inputs so actually we can change the input if you like but uh, let's start at zero for everything now because uh, the first thing you read from the room when it's zero is this value oh, yeah. um, eight and then this is a six six in hex so let's continue clear the input read a which is zero as you can see up here and then we check the bit and it's going to skip if it's set and then it skips again and it skips again everything is zero so that's the input is still zero and the input is here somewhere you can see zeros I think you're just going to continue here right and t is at pb3 uh, like here so you can see it will read high uh, so then it will branch if t is set so then, then it will actually branch so let's see what it does it branches right so it actually loads the 15 ips not the seven and a half clear temp clear carry we add the offset and then we look up in the table and we get 86 that was what I was saying in the beginning so we have 86 in the first first byte in the uh, table so and now you're going to take that value and put it out on the ports so let's see we move output to temp again so you can see 86 is now a temp we um, 
first instance we're just going to focus on the first bits here that's why you have a six there we rotate it we put it out on the port and now we can see on the port D which now has these two values uh, I think it's a bit fiddly to explain why those are high now but uh, <laughs> okay now we're going to take that same output again 86 because we're going to do the other port for the other port we are going to do a uh, bit shift plus a swap so let's have a look at that okay we mask it first we just have the 8 there and the next one we're going to do left shift which then becomes a 4 and then we're going to do a swap and we can see the 4 is over there then I'm just going to set those uh, missing bits again so then we get a 5 <laughs> so and the next thing it does it just uh, goes back to the loop here's the start of the loop again so now um, let's change the A0 which is PA2 let's see if that offset is working so to do that you have to go to port A and then it's uh, bit 2 I'm just going to set that high for the input value. We're going to see the final input value now. It's now 1. It's exactly what we wanted. Oh, turn to 0 for some reason. When I double click it, there must be a bug. Um, okay, I'm going to restart it. I'm going to do this over again. I'm just going to do the setup first. I have some bugs in this program, I think. So now we are at the beginning of, beginning of the loop and we're going to set A0 at uh, um, 1. Then that means PA2, go to A and 2, set this to 1. Okay, let's execute. Let's see what's in input now. Now input is 1, I'm not going to click it because then we get a bug. <laughs> not sure why. Then we're going to load the uh, table Z register. Now what's going to happen is um, this set register is going to be added with that one we, we had. So you can see the input here. Um, there you go, input here. Uh, we'll go get a uh, add addition here. There you can see it was added there. I don't know why uh, the Z data is up here, but it's up there for some reason. And then uh, we're going to add the carry, which is not doing anything. And then we're going to do the lockup, lookup, which says 86. This is interesting. Let's see if that's true. Well, that's not too interesting, is it? Because because the first two are exactly the same as before. Right, so let's try uh, 0, 1, 2. Let's try this one instead. Okay, let's restart. Skip the uh, setup. There. Now let's try 2. So if we want to do a 2, we will need a high on a1. Uh, so let's go to port D0. Let's put that on high. So let's try that. Uh, just going to step down to the lookup. There you go. Now we have a tool on that input register hour of ours. Let's try and see what we get on the output after the lookup. Yeah, there we get A6. So let's see what's on this position. There we go. So this 0, 1, 2. So A, well, that's right. 4 plus, or 8 plus 2 is 10 or A. And then you have 6. Uh, so that's 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay, so that's correct. Nice. So now the table is working, I think. And then that value will 
be put on the output. Da, 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 da. There you go. So that's the program. Basically it. So now I just need to edit down the video from 44 minutes to like 5 or something. <laughs>